yes uh, good morning uh, my dear student friends today let us discuss a new poem called the school boy which was composed by william blake friends william blake is one of the great personalities who belongs to romantic period blake is an english poet painter and as well as print maker blake who was born in the year 1757 at soho in london his father mr james who was a high sir and his mother was a nice homemaker dear student friends mr blake has spent down many works some of them are the song of innocence the song of experience the marriage of heaven and hell so on and so forth the particular poem the school boy is basically extracted from the collection of poems called song of innocence later it was published under the title called song of experience now let us recite the poem the school boy which was penned a penned down by william blake yes <clears throat> recitation of the poetry i love to rise in a summer morn when the birds sing on every tree the distant huntsman winds his horn and the skylark sings with me oh what a sweet company but to go to school in a summer morn oh it drives all joy away under a cruel eye outworn the little ones spend the day in sighing and dismay and then at times i drooping sit and spend many an anxious hour not in my book can i take delight no sit in a learnings bower worn through with dreary shower how can the bird that is born for the joy sit in a cage and sing how can the bird that is born for joy sit in a cage and sing how can a child when fears annoy but droop his tender wing but droop his tender wing and forget his youthful spring oh father and mother if birds are nipped and blossoms blown away and if the tender plants are stripped of their joy in springing day by sorrow and dis cares dismay how shall the summer arise in a joy or the summer fruits appear or how shall we gather what griefs destroy or bless the mellowing ear when the blasts of winter appear this is the recitation of poetry yes
Now let us discuss uh, critical appreciation of the poem, The Schoolboy. Friends, the po uh, sorry, <coughs> the poem, uh, The Schoolboy by William Blake is written from the perspective of a young boy who hates going to school in a disciplined manner and rather desires to be like the birds. For him, the school is just like a prison which does not allow the creativity of a person to flourish. This particular poem has been divided into six stanzas. The rhyme scheme is AB, AB and followed by B pattern. It is included in Blake's collection as I said earlier that is the Song of Innocence. Later it was published under the title called The Song of Innocence. Thus in this poem the poet describes the innocent nature and desires of young boy. Yes, in the first stanza, the schoolboy says that he loved to rise in a summer morn. It is the time when the birds sing on every tree. The distant huntsman blows his horn. And the skylar sings with him. Oh, what a sweet company for him. According to the schoolboy, it is, you know, the best company and he enjoys it very much. These are all three things he enjoys. The first stanza of the poem, you know, is all about the things which make the schoolboy to be happy. He liked the birds. He loved to rise in the early morn or the summer morn and enjoys you know the activities which happens at that particular time and you know the morning time is the time of hope and aspirations we all know that the morning time is very good time it's a time of hope and aspirations hence the you know human beings and as well as animals wake up in the morning in order to pursue of a goal or desires in sense in the second stanza, you know, the tone, to, uh, you know, the particular tone uh, totally changes from delight, rejoicing mood and hope to dismay and sorrow in sense. In the first stanza, it was happiness. In the first stanza, it was a kind of an ecstasy ceremony. In the second stanza, uh, we come across a kind of a melancholy, a kind of a dismay, a kind of a boredom in sense. Now let us discuss it. The schoolboy says that going to school in a summer morn is something that which is going to take away his entire happiness. This is what depicted in the second stanza there. But to go to school in a summer morn, oh, it drives all kind of a joy away. It is going to vanish all kind of happiness. Next. He says that in the school, the students have to spend all their day under a cruel eye outworn so under a cruel eye outworn the you know the meaning of this particular praise the schoolboy sends all uh, sorry spends all the time all the entire day in a school under a cruel eye outworn here under cruel eye outworn refers to strict teacher very strict teacher you might have noticed in your school days your English teacher or your mathematics teacher who is very strict in sense. There are certain rules and regulations of that particular teacher. Uh, you need to uh, uh, maintain discipline in the school, sit straight, finger on your lips. Mm. Yes or no? And they used to, you know, instruct you. They, they used to, you know, uh, order you. Uh, be quiet, maintain discipline, no talking, no speaking, no chit chat. These are all the, you know, restrictions, you know, we come across in the uh, school days by our school teachers itself. Okay. Does the young boy or the young man, according to him, have to spend the day in distress as well as sadness? 
The second stanza describes the schoolboy's concern over the, you know, uh, the way of the schoolwork. The children are kept under the, under the strict surveillance and are forced to obey the rules and regulations of the school. So, the schoolboy or young boy is fed off, you know, uh, the restricted rules and regulations of the school by the school teacher. Okay. Next, in the third stanza, uh, the schoolboy, you know, here describes how he spends his day at the school. According to him, he often sits and spends a lot of time in boredom. So he spends all the day in the boring manner. He feels as if, uh, you know, everything is a kind of a boring in sense. He does not find any kind of happiness or joy in books. So it is depicted in this third stanza there. Ah, uh, then at times I drooping sit and spend many an anxious hour. Nor in my book can I take delight or nor sit in a learning's bower worn through with dreary shower. So this is what depicted in the third stanza. Uh, now let us, uh, you know, appreciate it. The schoolboy says that he does not, uh, you know, feel any kind of a joy while sitting in a learning's bower, which according to him is a worn through with dreary shower. Here, bower refers to, a bower means a kind of a shady place uh, under the tree. During olden days, we come across Gurukul system. A teacher used to sit under the tree and teach for several students. So, uh, teaching under a tree, so that is called as a learning bower here. Or in the modern times, we can say it as, uh, you know, uh, sitting in the classroom, sitting in desk and teacher teaches uh, through the uh, process of using blackboard, smart board, PPT or whatever. Okay. Here, Bauer refers to a shady place under the tree. However, the phrase learner's Bauer means a place where someone comes to learn, whether it, it might be a school, whether it might be a college, whether it might be a research center, whether it might be a university or whether it might be a, any coaching center or whatever. <clears throat> so, this Bauer refers to acquire knowledge. This learning's Bauer refers to acquire knowledge. Yes, my dear student friends, knowledge is always precious in sense. Thus, learners, Bauer, as per as the schoolboy, is completely damaged or has a defect because it was hit by the dreary shower. Dreary shower in sense, you know, it's a simple context, means heavy rain, which is distress, disaster in sense. I can call it as a disastrous in sense. You, you might have noticed it during your 9th and 10th standard, a disaster management, a chapter called disaster management. Okay. Well, however, when we try to uh, elaborate a dreary shower to the learn uh, learner's power, it, it means that school's education system has been damaged or it is, you know, defective in sense. Why it is defective? It can be traced in the previous stanza, I, that is the cruel I. As you, uh, you know, noticed uh, that uh, under a cruel eye outworn, you might have noticed that particular stanza. Okay. A uh, young student cannot learn uh, under the rules and regulations. A uh, young student cannot uh, learn under restrictions. He needs love. He needs freedom. He needs complete joy. But the cruel eye outworn of the teachers or the parents has completely destroyed the basic purpose of education. The students are forced to learn, you know, those things which make them capable of acquiring materialistic life or materialistic things. And for that, they have to give up all the things which would have otherwise made them a better human being. Okay, we cannot learn, we cannot study, or we cannot uh, grab knowledge or acquire knowledge under certain rules and regulations or uh, under restrictions. A child or a school, this particular schoolboy or a young man needs complete love, freedom, uh, understanding in order to acquire knowledge. In the fourth stanza, the schoolboy raises a number of uh, questions here. First, he asks, how can the bird that is born for joy sit in a cage and sing? Here, he himself compares to a caged bird. And like that uh, caged bird, uh, he too loses joy in the school if he is caged in the school. 
if he, his life is restricted to the four walls, he cannot, uh, uh, you know, acquire knowledge. Further, he asked, how can a child, when fears annoy, but droop his tender wing and forget his youthful spring? Here, he says that a child who is scared by the teachers and parents cannot forget the joy of freedom when the latter keep their wings locked. Thus, he remains joyless and longs for the freedom. Yes, my dear student friends, the schoolboy need, needs complete love, complete freedom in order to learn, in order to study. Okay. In the fifth stanza, uh, you know, we come across the conversation with the, uh, you know, parents. He says that <clears throat> if like a flower's birds, the child's freedom is snatched away and its flowers blown away and if newly grown twigs, here it means newly acquired joy by the child are uh, removed at the time of spring season. Spring refers to autumn season. Okay. When the child has started growing up, he, you know, like the flower plant, will be left in sorrow and dismay. This is what uh, it is depicted in the fifth stanza here. Oh, father and mother, if birds are nipped and blossoms blown away, and if the tender plants are stripped away, uh, you know, of their joy in a springing day by sorrow and dismay. Finally, in the sixth stanza, you know, which depicts the continuous from the previous stanza. According to the poet, how summer can be uh, joyful when the birds uh, of a flower are cut in sense, the flower threw away and the twigs removed away, the fruit of summer would never appear. Thus, how the plants here, you know, children would be able to get the fruit which has been, uh, you know, destroyed in sense. How can the summer be a blessing when the blast of winter appear? The final stanza is totally metaphorical in sense. I can say it as metaphor. The final stanza itself is called as a metaphor here. The schoolboy compares the children to the spring plants which have been destroyed. According to him, like the flowers, the children too need, you know, complete freedom for the efficient growth. This is all the critical appreciation of uh, the poem called The Schoolboy by William Blake.